Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to our circle where we gather from around the world, coming together into the creative laboratory to explore and experiment with awakening the souls of our nation. I welcome you on behalf of the Hikal group from Jerusalem and Klanchali group from Germany, along with the 2025 initiative. Thank you for joining us today. And I invite Uta and Jonathan to take us into our journey today. Thank you. Welcome everyone to our Gemini Nations Lab session. And today I am here in Germany joined by Jonathan, which is a special opportunity to do this work together in the physical. It adds another level to the work. So in the Nations Lab, spiritual students from many nations come together every month as a council of elders in training. We practice skills which may be required for the personnel of a soul-guided United Nations of the future. And we address different world issues. As we are a lab, we each time um, experiment with a new item, or a, new, um, a new idea. At the moment, we are for the last two times, and today we do the same, uh, we are experimenting with making the thinkable feelable. And we do this today, as we did also last time with Europe, by addressing the subject under consideration as a living entity, which means letting it speak in its own voice, speaking through the presenting group in the first person. And then the participants responding to it as delegates of their own nation, addressing this collective entity as a living being. Today, one thing that we will do new is we will try out inviting the entity under consideration, which today is the United States of America, directly into our council chamber of elders in training. Up until now, we had first, we were listening uh, to, to the presentation and then we took it into meditation. And um, so today we will have the presentation, the address of the USA within the council chamber, which is perhaps similar to the proceeding within the General Assembly of the UN. So we will see how that works and um, share afterwards if that is a, a good way to proceed. The Council Chamber is our place in which we practice transforming conflict into creative tension. So this is actually the culture of diplomacy, the domain of the fourth ray the art of discourse. We are practicing holding different narratives in one space together so, so that they may harmonize eventually into a planetary perspective. We are holding the field of tension for this to happen. So today we will hold space for the United States of America as a living, evolving being. We will listen with our ears and our heart. Each group, each nation has its own style according to its astrological and ray makeup. 
So the US group, in true Gemini fashion, they will deliver the address through four different voices. So let us experience this format and afterwards share how this was for us. Also, um, we got the feedback from some of you that it would be helpful to have the text available uh, while the address is being offered. Especially, this can be helpful for non-native English speakers. So you can find a link to the text in the chat box. The USA group has prepared a beautiful design of the astrological makeup of the USA. And we will show it as, uh, as we go. And um, it can inspire us, it can help us get a sense of the archetypal design of this collective entity. And uh, it reminds me of an aspect of the layout of the mystery schools that DK has given us. Uh, there is in the middle the, ma the main assembly and around it is, uh, are the private cells of the different disciples. And what separates the, 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 the middle part from these cells is a curtain. And in this curtain, there is woven the symbols of the astrological and ray makeup of each disciple. So when the disciple USA will start to speak, the design will be shown on the screen. Okay. So let us begin. Let us <clears throat> enter into meditation. Let us withdraw our attention into the inner stillness. Breathing. And grounding in our body. Touching base with the earth. Our heart calibrates to the will to love. And our mind focuses in the center of the head. Drawing a line of light upwards from the center of the head to the soul. Standing as the soul infused personality, the conscious soul incarnate. And opening now our consciousness to the call for planetary psychosynthesis. Following this call now, let us make our way to the beautiful building set in nature, 
which we already know very well. Entering now into the quiet and clear and spacious council chamber of elders in training. Taking our places as delegates in the light of the soul of our nation. in geometric order. Sense the atmosphere in the chamber, the geometrical harmony. In the center of the chamber, let us visualize the flame of our combined, sustained will to love. Let our hearts tune to it. holding together this space of intent, sustained love. Tuning now into the mental space of the council chamber, a calm, clear, lighted space. It vibrates to the rate of the Ajna center of the planet. And through this vibration, we are linked with our fellow world workers in all nations. Remaining focused in the group Ajna Center, let us now mentally reach out towards the ashramic world, stretching, stretching upwards and opening our consciousness to those co-workers in the ashram who guide our work in the nation's lab. Expanding our consciousness, gradually fine tuning our vibration, swinging into the ashramic thought field. Taking a moment for this, being receptive to close communion and co-work. While we remain in close communion with on high, our feet remain solidly on the floor of the council chamber. And we are aware 
of four great deva beings helping us to hold this space. One at each direction, the north, south, east and west. Keeping this shared lighted space stable, let us now invite the delegates of the United States of America to speak on behalf of their nation as a living, evolving entity. Let us now, as representatives of our own nation, receive the voice of the United States of America. I am the voice of the spirit of the United States, beginning to fuse my personality. I want to tell you of myself, the many facets of my being, walking along an evolutionary path. I will tell you the story of my origins, that you may know who I am. I honor, welcome, and call in the ancestry of my being, flowing from the wisdom of the indigenous elders and of the grandmothers. I will begin with the Iroquois Confederacy of my indigenous peoples. Their constitution gave inspiration to the European settlers. I will speak to a re-declaration of the founding of my nation inspired by the six council fires of the Iroquois Confederacy as a way of governance of the people, a way of council, and a way to peace. The constitution of the Iroquois Confederacy inspired a new awareness of we the people that gave shape to the constitution of the European founders and framers of the United States. The wisdom of Mother Earth echoes down the ages to my people. May we the people now form a more perfect union was enshrined uniquely in the Constitution of the United States. My karmic wound is here. It is the tragedy of genocide wrought upon the natives of my lands. The love of nature was lost to an American dream of riches and ambition. In the same moment of the signing of the Declaration of Independence from the monarchy of England, by the settlers who declared all men are created equal. My nation saw the forced immigration of captured and enslaved Africans with no rights, 
no freedom of their own until the Civil War of the 1860s. Yet, their labor and skill built immense prosperity for the white Christian ruling class. The Africans of the diaspora are a resilient and beautiful people who have been the target of all manner of toxicity due to no understanding of the beauty of diversity. It grieves me that nothing other than a difference in melanin, the color of one's skin, determined a status of inferiority and exclusion. My awareness of mistreatment, subjugation, and punishments of Black, Indigenous, people of color has brought me so much pain and regret. Due to inequality and harm. It is a scar upon my soul. There is a deep spiritual connection that runs through the indigenous African people of color. Their perseverance, strength and faith continue to rise. I, the soul, evolve and grow. The settlers from Europe sensing their freedom from the servility of an old world, then subjugated the native peoples from out of their own original trauma of Roman conquest. This too must be healed. I honor the courage and the bravery of all of those who have lived on my land and come to my shores, who now contribute to new dimensions of leadership in my nation. Let the people create the world in which we seek to live according to a higher plan. I hear too the voice of Lady Liberty a manifestation of my highest soul quality. At the gateway of these lands, as she eternally invokes, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. a magnetic invitation that I sound around the globe. 
I affirm, this is the true abundance of the United States. I relish the rich texture, the color, the vibrancy, and the creative genius of humanity who converge upon my lands from every country of the world. My people have a unique courage, curiosity, and optimism. We are willing to dream. And yet, the greed for material riches stimulated a misguided quest for power whose tentacles have overreached my borders, dominated other people, and bled the resources of many of our brother and sister nations. I recognize this. I recognize this misalignment of will and a tragic misuse of the military. And this too, I acknowledge and resolve to heal. Please join with me in remembering my higher contributions. Remember with me, the initiators and founders of many of the Aquarian wisdom traditions who have come to my shores to plant their seeds of my fertile soil, my fertile soul and soil. And remember the turning points of recent generations, the world's first synchronized global peace meditation in 1987. Aquarian messages continue to be born out of these celebrations of our common inheritance. And recall gazing upon our earth made visible for the first time from the moon looking back upon our blue planet. Did we not know ourselves in that fleeting moment of reflection, that first time inwardly knowing the whole as a one humanity? Where do I find myself at this turning point today as I join you in this council? My goal is not just unification to form a more perfect union as we the people, but unity out of diversity a synthesis that will express itself in a glorious outer differentiation. I can now see this unity my nation is tasked with to resolve, to redeem, and to heal our karmic liabilities as great opportunities to become an example to the world of inclusive understanding, cooperation, creativity, generosity, and an open heart, a center of synthesis 
that will ultimately be a light to the world. Here is my sole purpose, a synthesis of humanity who struggle so poignantly toward the promise of freedom and oneness. E pluribus unum. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. My keynote perfectly defines this unification. Aquarius is my soul sign. My nation aspires to pour forth the waters of life for thirsting humanity. Gemini is my personality sign that declares, let opposites be resolved into synthesis and unity be achieved. Acted upon in cooperative and creative relationship with others, there is my sole purpose in full expression. I know the current condition of my people is confusion, obscuration, and separation. I now recognize this is our shadow. I labor under the shadow of many false idols. My people need to redirect the economy the vital life substance and creative vitality away from militarism and toward the restoration of nature and the social fabric. I seek a shift away from the corporatization of the military as early as 1816, founding father Thomas Jefferson wrote a strong warning to our nation. He said, I hope we shall take warning from the example and crush in its birth the aristocracy of our moneyed corporations, which dare already to challenge our government to a trial of strength and to bid defiance to the laws of their country. Imagine with me this vast military reorganized toward humanitarian and ecological restoration to serve the needs of the people and the planet while helping to uphold international common law. Will the people harness the desire to direct their aspiration towards spiritual will and purpose, born of courage and curiosity? from the show of power to a sharing of power. This remains our struggle today, for in it lies the seeds of war, of duality and opposites, the inhumanity of moneyed corporations versus the needs of my people. I shed tears for our nation, for the masses kept in lack and ignorance of their birthright of freedom, and who don't understand who they are. I have remorse for the selfishness which has brought 
our ecosystem to the very edge of collapse. I remember the brilliant minds of my sons and daughters, inventors whose lives and creative ideas were sacrificed in the name of national security. I have keen hope for those of my people who persist in the dream of liberating mankind from economic slavery and who will bring forth the gift of clean, new, and free energy for humanity to heal the wounds of our planetary environment. Please, will you join with me in our global efforts of transmutation for all of our children and all humanity born into the next seven generations? What then is the idea the United States going forward. As I stand with you in council, do my people believe in a constitution? My heart is wedded to a constitution that begins with we the people in order to create a more perfect union. Now I ask myself, as we, the people of the United States, whether we are a country that can unify around a set of common laws. Are my people truly inspired by love wisdom, by Isis, the universal mother, by every man a Christ? What is the idea of my nation? And how do you, gathered here, see my potential, my possibility? My people are now so much more aware of the separative forces and systems at play. Again, I speak to you now as we the people, observing the corrosive systems in which we are forced to live. We, the people, are no longer cowering victims of toxic frames of enslavement. We, the people, are no longer willing to embrace patriarchy. We, the people, are no longer willing and are not victims anymore, but aware. As we, the people everywhere, we will create relationships with all peoples and all of life, with courage, curiosity, and optimism, yearning for the livingness and genius of our diversity to rise, to rise, to rise. May we, in this Council of Nations, now open our universal hearts to a receiving of the new Christ Sophia wisdom that will help us all to build a new civilization and a better world in which we are welcomed by our cosmic elders to join them in co-creating a new star culture on earth as foreseen by our grandmothers and fathers, a returning to our collective wisdom, to our cosmic and collective heritage.
Hear me now as I speak to all our relatives and to the relationship of all our nations. I stand before you revealed in all my aspects. I am aware of that which I have created with much enthusiasm, idealism, often with wrong motives. I am anxious to be accepted within a circle of nations. Please don't judge me, but will you accept me for who I am right now? As a sixth ray personality, I have a passion for ideals and an often violent, fanatical tendency to take sides within the pairs of opposites with all the might I have. In this aspect, I am divided within and create division and demonization of the other worldwide. I have forced a majority of nations to congeal into blocks and armed races that have kept humanity separate and afraid. Here, my friends, are my allies in arms alone to the ultimate benefit of none. As an aspirant, I struggle with an abundance of humanity's conflicts swept onto my shores from all points of the globe, which I seek and struggle to harmonize into reconciliation. As a disciple with a feminine second ray soul, and as a world womb aspiring to bring forth the waters of life and the seeds of synthesis out of opposite, with which we have labored for so long. I long to give birth to diversity within humanity made new as a fifth dimensional crystalline family of galactic citizens. I speak now to the traumas of my people. My karmic wound is the tragedy of genocide wrought upon the native peoples and to the ones brought as slaves from Africa to my lands. I acknowledge too the trauma within the ancient memory of the European settlers. No formal apology has yet been voiced to the indigenous peoples of my nation. I offer that now from my heart. In deepest compassion, I also acknowledge the injustices of all who have suffered exclusion. Today, in reverence, I honor the gifts of wisdom and culture held sacred by my ancestors and sustained till this very day. I walk with you in beauty and forgiveness. May we heal as we the people everywhere together. I declare the intent that my nation will rescind the doctrine of discovery of the dark ages that subjugated and dehumanized indigenous peoples worldwide. 
I will arise above and end our compliance to the old Roman law and to its universal enslaving economy that was embedded in my laws and those of most other nations. I will speak now to the harm done to and with other nations. I affirm all that we of all nations have in common, that as a one humanity we will stand, protect and defend together. I declare my intention for the 21st century and beyond, my true role in active cooperative relationships with others. I wish to acknowledge each nation here. You have your own way of wisdom, your gifts. Let us experience them and share them together. I want to learn to listen to and to receive your gifts. My hope is that we may share the fruits of our wisdom together. Coming out of World War II, when together we defended our universal freedoms, my intention was good, but it became subverted by the materialists for their own selfish purposes. In this respect, I have not supported you, my allies, in meeting our collective spiritual and practical needs. I speak now to our relationship with all nations of the seven continents. May the corporatized codependency with Britain and with Europe now be released. And may we all stand in the integrity of our own true light. And let my nation respect and restore autonomy to all our relatives, especially and including the global south. I, as the soul of my nation, as the disciple of the United States of America, invoke the souls of Canada, Central and South America, Russia, China, India, Europa, and Africa to inspire us to sit together in council. Let us create together the economy of a vibrant, shared, conscious new sphere. I say to you in brotherhood that my nation must become independent from and free from the ties of influence from Israel to move in the direction of wise policy. This is not a healthy relationship. It does not serve the common good of the, our one humanity. Let America be free from the motives and expectations of Israel in her demand to support ancient, unwarranted policies of aggression. 
Let us all know one another as we, all the people, not as all the warring paradigm. Let us set us all free from the frames of history, of differences, from our egos and from our fears. Let us see one another as brother, sister nations of a one soul and a one life in sovereign diversity. We have done wrong to one another in the past. We ask that you forgive us as we also forgive you. And to know that in truth and in all our hearts, we love and accept you for who you are right now. Let our nation then withdraw our military bases and dissolve the obsessive doctrine since World War II of full spectrum dominance. A syndrome of old empire the world can no longer tolerate, born out of an old Atlantean karmic imprint from which we must all now move on and free our consciousness from the chains of the past. Let us now claim our true gifts in active relationships the world over of cooperation, conflict resolution, and the co-creation of a new and better world. May we all be released from our fundamentalism, imperialism, colonialism, and geopolitical corporatism and hegemony. These are our common enemies. As disciple of the United States of America, in unity with we the people in all our nations let us enter the aquarian age releasing our patriarchal embrace to recover to heal and to integrate anew our divine feminine roots as we stand in the light of true equilibrium let us be as equals answering to the universal wisdom a wisdom that is guided by the golden rule, a universal principle, a moral ideal that defines the relationships among all nations, all cultures, all races, all genders, and all religions. A golden paradigm that extends to the one life of our planet an inclusive attitude that demonstrates the highest intention of the divine family that is the truth of our being. This is the fire that burns within the torch of Lady Liberty held high as we light the way. Let the way be one of equality as a one humanity. In this, our election year, an election year for many of our nations, knowing the impact upon our common humanity for good or for ill, I call upon you, dear brothers and sisters, to support, to visualize the healing of this nation, that I may take my place with you as equals. And as we move into right relationships 
for the common good. This is initiation as the conscious incarnating soul may we say together let us make all things new Let a silence now settle in the council chamber. Let us hold space for that which has been received, listening to our inner response and allowing the higher light to shine on it. A few moments of receptivity for a deepening understanding and inspiration. Taking another moment to focus specifically 
on the divine purpose and gift of the United States moving forward into the new era. With gratitude, releasing now the focus from the United States and gently coming back, moving our awareness back into the council chamber. And remaining for another moment just in each other's presence. Resting and replenishing in our refined shared space. When we're ready, we may open our eyes to note down any impressions before we will start our sharing. Okay, we invite you now to share your impressions, questions, wishes with the United States of America as a living being. And we remember from our snapshot experiences how precious these feedbacks are for the group that works with the collective entity. And in our experience, what has most value is a brief and synthetic sentence or two. Brief but full. And uh, if possible, let us speak directly to the living entity itself. And if you wish, if you are able to do so as a representative of your nation. And as we receive each offering, let us take a moment of silence after each one so it can settle into our shared space.
OCL family, I trust that you can hear my voice. Yes. Yes. Can you say from where you speak? This is Darcy speaking to you from the Washington, D.C. area in the United States of America. Right. I'm deeply moved by what was presented here today and recognize the alignment and the living organism that we are. On October 22nd, uh, on May 22nd of this month, Chief Phil Lane Jr. who began the indigenous voices to be heard in the United Nations some 30 years ago. Released through the 22 women's sacred prayers, which the Global Silent Minute supports. An indigenous ally led proposal beginning in the Americas, fulfilling the prophecies of the indigenous peoples and the Allied-led global movement, peace movement. Significant initiative beginning in the Americas is now underway. With the collective wisdom of our ancestors and the active participation of our global allies, this movement promises an enlightening path to the future where peace, justice, and sustainability are realities. By advancing in unity in this journey, we affirm our commitment and dedication to unite humanity and restore Mother Earth to the enduring power of our spiritual unity and respect with our foundational actions rooted in the spiritual heart of the Americas, which is rooted in the innermost chambers of our Creator's heart. They begin the world global indigenous people have gathered and are fulfilling the prophecies. We begin in North and South America. They have lit, lit the eight fire and it is burning. These proposals will be handed to the United Nations. So that which was presented today, speaking of the Iroquois nations, those nations are alive and well, and the proposals shared have been placed in the attachment of this new document just released for your preview to see how we, as an esoteric occult spiritual group within this great being of life we share, are harmonizing and connecting in a beautiful way with the very thing you brought forth today into this council chamber. So wado ililega, I am grateful and we are grateful. We are one family. Thank you, Darcy. Um, I would like to remind that the sharings, let us uh, try to keep them short and also to speak slowly because dear Margot is taking notes. Greetings all, this is Leone speaking from South Africa. I am deeply moved by this expression. And I want to thank the four who spoke for so beautifully bringing us the unified voice of the soul of the United States of America. 
how I experienced this tonight was as if a loving family had gathered in the lounge, sitting at a gently blazing fire, waiting to hear from the prodigal son or daughter who had returned, seeking to be reconciled with the brothers and sisters, the mother and father. I could truly feel the heart of contrition and the reaching out with a desire to receive and extend forgiveness. So thank you for that, for bringing this into our council chamber. Thank you too to Darcy for an inspiring report. I would ask that all the beautiful souls gathered here together would hold my nation of South Africa in the chalice, lifting us all up as we go to the poles tomorrow. We have a history of violence or intimidation and voter fraud and corruption. And it is my heart's desire and intent that this will be the end of that and tomorrow's election will bring us and usher in the new beautiful age of Aquarius for all of our people. Thank you. Thank you, Leonie, and blessings for tomorrow. Hello, this is Helen speaking from Israel. And um, as, um, as someone who lives in Israel and in the Middle East, um, I do appreciate the wish of ending sick dependencies so you, the United States, can allow yourself and your dependent satellites to heal and to find their own um, authentic alignment. Thank you. Hello, here is Annette from Germany, trying to speak as Germany. So 
austere former felt two big sister United States of America. Thank you for opening up in this deeply touching way. Now I see you. And this brings out the deeper, true and equal relationship that connects us in our hearts and souls. So let us work together and move into right relationships for the common good. And this is Martha from the United States speaking to the voice of America. Deepest gratitude for bringing to mind the many servers who give their lives to the ideals of we the people. I'm thinking of Mother Cabrini and of Robert Reich, one of our many speakers and founders of Common Cause, former Secretary Labor, a secretary who trusted in his representation of the working people. I thank you for using your words to open the hearts of all of us seeking to create the one world, which is our job. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Uh, hello, this is Judy. Uh, as I listened to this dialogue, to this heart sharing, I knew right away that truth had been spoken with clarity, looking at wounds and blockages and light, and that these words need to reverberate through the ethers and be held by all who consider unity to be their goal. Uh, so it has been spoken here today, uh, but its need to really go out uh, is, is great. In this way, we can begin to work with the dweller uh, by supporting its opposite. And we can do that here, and we can do that now. And I know we'll do that every Saturday. Thank you. Judy, thank you. Hi, everyone. This is Geisha from Canada. Dear soul of America, as a representative of the soul of Canada, your neighbor to the north, I find your sharing inspiring truthful, honest. You truly do light the way. Together, we are healing our shared karmic debt to the indigenous people 
of Turtle Island. And with the soul of America, North America, the Americas, together we can lead the way to the new era of right relations. Thank you, Deisha. This is Sabina from Germany, from Flanschalen. From dear United States, with deep gratitude and with a new hope um, I greet you, listening to you, I remembered what you have been for us, like this country of the unlimited possibilities. I thank you very much for your courage to name and show your wounds and your griefs, so I can feel you and so I can share with you, like many others, this common human danger to fail. From the bottom of my heart, I wish to follow and support you to invest in your feminine skills, to nourish and to serve the healing and evolving of the human family by listening and understanding by heart the other nation's need and narratives. Relighting the torch of Lady Liberty, you showed me as a gate where we together with you can enter and sail to a new never reached horizon of a one humanity with the wealth and the best for all, which will be a complex and meaningful and hard work. But with your courage and your curiosity and your splendid not being afraid of feeling this great um, homework, great labor. We wait for you to give the impulse to do that. Thank you for making this traveling alongside your roots, your becoming, and your enthusiastic vision of what is ahead of you, which is ahead of all of us. Deep gratitude. Thank you, Sabina.
Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Ah, thank you. Uh, thank you all for today's presentation. Um, I live in Colorado in the United States. My name is Simon. And uh, yesterday, I read on uh, the internet that one of our Supreme Court justices, uh, Sonia Sotomayor, she said that she goes home every day and she's so saddened and traumatized by what's happening in the Supreme Court that she cries. And that affected me by extending empathy towards her. And um, so I thought to myself, uh, what can I do? So I sent her prayers and I said, what kind of prayer should I send her? And it came to me uh, that the only thing that would help her to reconcile her trauma with what's, you know, with her soul was the light and loving understanding that comes from um, the higher realms, that comes from uh, spiritual hierarchy, our souls, um, that comes from an understanding of the law of karma comes from an understanding of, or from the perspective of the lords of karma. So I asked that, you know, in the name of the Christ, that she is able to reconcile her trauma with, in such a way that, you know, gives her some understanding as to what's going on in the world today. And I think that um, one of the objectives of the forces of, of, of light uh, uh, prior to the Christ's reappearance said everything happening in the world today will uh, bring about a tenderizing of the heart and bring about this type of empathy that, that I felt so that we can uh, reconnect to our humanity once again and to one another. So uh, thank you again, everyone, today for this, uh, this presentation. Much love and blessings. Simon, thank you. This is Margo from Canada. Spirit and soul of the United States of America, I greet you, dear neighbor to the South, with deep gratitude and respect, I honor and I see you and I welcome you into this council chamber. Thank you, Margo.
So this is Kiki from Washington, D.C. in the United States. Very deep gratitude for these beautiful words and ideals that you all have put together, reminding us about the possibilities for what this country is supposed to be about and all countries. It gives much hope for the future to hear these spoken as you have today. Just thank you very, very much. Much love and much love to this country. Thank you very much, bye. Kiki, thank you. Is there anyone else? Uh, we are approaching the end of our time together. Maybe one or two more short responses. Uh, hello, this is Jill from UK. I'd just like to thank America for the frank presentation they gave. It's very encouraging that we all appear, I would think, to be heading in the right direction and they have set out their way of doing things excellently and thank you very much. Thank you, Ju. This is you all from the United States. I just want to say how grateful I am for this. I was born in Israel and this this conflict in the last seven months just tore me to pieces and I, I needed to hear this today and you opened my heart so beautifully and remind me of the possibilities and I, I'm just so grateful for being lifted by those readings and by everybody's sharings and making my day maybe making the whole week and the whole month thank you very much thank you you have blessings Okay, dear friends, thank you all for this rich and heartfelt sharing. Let us now take another minute and as representatives of our nations, hold the USA's relationships within the family of nations in our group chalice for this ongoing process of absorption, transmutation and expression within the energy of love wisdom and synthesis. We offer all virtue and wisdom back up to the Christ and to the divine plan.
Thank you all friends for this deep work together. Alexander, do you have any announcements? Thank you, Uta. Thank you, Jonathan and the American group. Deep gratitude. I invite to join our multiple programs through our sustained effort holding our focused point of tension we do what all we can manifesting the divine plan i also want to invite you to join the ongoing seven ray conference that's happening online this year as yet another opportunity for the world esoteric community to come together to meditate listen and learn together preparing the way much gratitude. Thank you. And our next Nations Lab session will be on June 25th, and it will be on the Middle East. So let us seed this for in another month. Perhaps you may want to do some homework, some research, familiarizing yourselves a bit with what is going on or with the history, whatever you are drawn to. And yeah, gratitude and see you next month. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you.